Uh, thanks for making it to the very last session on the very last day, also known as the graveyard session. Um, but I'm pleased that there's so many of you here, so, so it's quite encouraging. I was picturing maybe about 20 people in the last session, but this is quite good. So thanks for coming. Yeah. Now, um, what I want to talk about today is really a good news story. Um, um, if we go to, um, uh, to well, I'll, I'll tell, give you a bit of introduction to what we did, what this restricted environment was that I'm talking about. Um, I'll talk about what's called the RAW program back in, um, in New Zealand. Um, we piloted a university first year paper uh, in a prison environment. I'll tell you about that paper. I'll uh, just briefly tell you about the IT setup, and I'm not an IT expert, so don't ask me any complicated questions there. I'm, I was the learning designer. Um, and uh, um, we'll talk about the challenges um, and a and bit of reflection uh, after the first delivery of the paper. Now, on the very first slide, we had my name as the e-learning designer. Um, you might have noticed Paul Cowan, who's the IT expert. Uh, he's got a fancy title. Um, he's called the relationship manager for our faculty. Um, he was really great in identifying and recommending um, particular IT setups for delivery within the prison. And then there's Gina Miller, who was the lecturer for this paper. Um, she's done really sterling work um, and didn't really have to be led by the hand. We had a, a number of meetings before and during um, the design of the paper, um, but she was just great taking the ball and running with it. Um, so we've been talking about, uh, you know, having easy access, free access, anywhere, anytime to the internet. But really, there are some sections of society that don't have that luxury of access to the internet. Um, it could be because of their financial situations, it could be because of their location, but we also have people in prisons who don't have access to the internet. Okay, So the challenge was how can we actually use an LMS in the prison setting? Uh, back in New Zealand, most prison education actually uh, is, is paper-based. So people have books and notes and things and do a lot of writing, and they may use computers, but, but not an LMS. So uh, during last year, the discussion started where um, Anna Stretton, now um, you, some of you might, well, um, maybe the ladies would know Anna Stretton. She's, uh, does anybody know Anna Stretton? She's a New Zealand fashion designer. Yes, at least one person knows her, that's good. She's got a number of uh, shops selling her creations, um, but she also does uh, a lot of good work. And she's got this raw program, R-A-W, Reclaim Another Woman. And she does a lot of work in prisons, but also outside of prisons, getting people back into work, etc. So she approached our um, Deputy Vice-Chancellor Academic, Robin Longhurst, who also is on the Royal Board, and said, how about you guys delivering a paper for uh, the women in prison? And this was at the Auckland uh, Regional Council's Correctional Facility. Um, so RAW was actually established by Anna Stretton and her sister, Rebecca Skelton, who does a lot of work in prisons as well. So I, I'm putting up those three pictures there. That's Anna Stretton on the left, um, Robin Longus, our Deputy Vice-Chancellor Academic in the middle, and Gina Miller, the lecturer on the right. And um, I've deliberately left out my picture because in my own estimation, I really didn't do that much. Uh, um, uh, and also Paul Cowan, the IT person, who actually did a lot, but we decided, yeah, we want to highlight the women as the role models, because this paper was delivered in a women's prison. So it was important also for the prisoners themselves, and from now on I'll refer to them as students, not prisoners. Um, it was important for them to see 
role models um, for, for, for themselves. So. so just a bit of the raw program. I'm not going to read all of that. Um, charitable work that uh, Anna Seton does in regard to education, um, both inside um, prisons and outside, working with women, um, in many cases also getting them together with children that they might have lost at some stage because they were in prison. Um, that's just a picture from the raw website. So if you Google Reclaim Another Woman, um, you'll be able to read quite a lot of good news stories. Okay. Um, this is a, um, a note from a guy called Stephen Cunningham, the director. Director of Offender Employment and Reintegration. And it just shows that RAW is making an impact um, in, in the prisons. And this is just a note acknowledging that from um, Stephen Cunningham. So if we go back to um, the paper that was chosen for delivery, I um, work in the Division of Management, which consists of two schools. Um, and one of the schools is the School of Marketing um, and management. And the paper, the first year paper, The Entrepreneur, was chosen. Um, now, you might say, why this paper? Well, first of all, it's a paper that didn't involve a lot of quantitative work, spreadsheets and stuff. In fact, none of that. It was more descriptive, and we thought this might be a gentle introduction. Secondly, a lot of the students that we were catering for actually did have entrepreneurial skills. Uh, maybe not in the areas that we would uh, think are traditional, but some of them actually made a lot of money. Okay, okay so, so this paper was chosen, and there's a brief description there about what the aim of, of the paper is. Um, but they could, they were able to the study theory and practice related to entrepreneurship, identify characteristics of good entrepreneurs, um, bring in their own experiences from all sorts of um, ventures that they had previously been uh, involved in, um, drawing up of business plans, identifying uh, a venture uh, that they could possibly be involved with in the future. Now, very important here also was lecture buy-in. Um, Gina Miller, as I said, was the lecturer. You had to have someone who had empathy, who had uh, the nature to deal with, um, uh, with the students, and was also willing to take up the challenge of designing a paper for delivery in the prisons. Um, the IT setup, um, we had 20 students doing the paper. Um, and they were each given iPads, which the university bought and, and, and sponsored, and which, which was collected after they completed the paper. Um, it was preloaded with content in Moodle. It was locked down, and only a, a set number of apps were actually put on the iPad. So the, the iPads couldn't be used for communication uh, within the prison. Um, it could connect only to a single identified uh, wireless network uh, provided by a designated cellular router. Now that all sounds, well, I'm not an IT person, I said, and it sounds like a mouthful, but actually the practicalities were actually uh, quite um, interesting because uh, when students were working on the iPads in their supervised learning sessions, all their quizzes, all their forum postings, uh, all their uh, work that they had uploaded to be marked, um, of course, because no internet connection couldn't come back to the university. So Paul, the IT person, um, would go up to the prison at least once a week. He'd collect all the iPads at the gatehouse, would be handed over by uh, um, correction staff. He would literally go into the car park and connect it all and sync it with the university. So feedback would come from the university and students' work would be uploaded to, uh, to Moodle where Gina could then market, provide comments and so on. So that was quite a labor intensive with Paul driving up from Hamilton to Auckland, a 250 kilometer return trip at least once a week. Okay? Um, so, and there's just a bit but more, um, if, 
It, as I said, the iPad was locked down, no communication was possible, but if by some chance one of the iPads connected to the internet, then university IT staff would get an alert immediately. All the iPads were also uh, tracked, and they were stored in the correctional facility in a secure cupboard um, while charging in preparation for the next session. So each of the prisoners, as I said, had supervised learning sessions. Um, they were provided with the iPad, a wireless, um, a, a wireless keyboard, and headphones as well. Um, by the way, um, all except one of the students actually passed the paper, which was the result that we did not expect. Okay? And the one who did not pass was withdrawn by the corrections department simply because she was caught with a set of the headphones leaving um, the, the, the study room. Okay? So they're quite strict with all these things. Yeah. Um, so that was just a few, um, well, not screenshots. I actually had to physically take my camera and take photos of the iPad. Because it was locked down, we couldn't uh, take screenshots and email it. So they still had to do it the old way. So we had uh, Adobe Acrobat, Word, um, PowerPoint, and of course the Moodle app as well. So um, the paper was delivered fully online, which was a major challenge. Um, over six weeks, okay, um, and they had multiple supervised learning sessions every week. So the lecturer only went to the, uh, to the pr uh, prison uh, at the beginning to introduce herself to the students, to find out what their learning needs were, to have discussions, what, are, what were their expectations, and in fact, um, uh, just to encourage them as well. And um, she also went towards the end of the six weeks to go and assess um, student group presentations. Um, the learning sessions were either supervised by correction staff or sometimes Anna Stretton and her sister also uh, supervised some of these. Um, as far as Moodle is concerned, Gina wanted to keep it simple because for many of these prisons, some of them had been in prison for more than 20 years and um, had never seen smartphones or iPads before. So Paul had to go up there for a few sessions to train the students on how to use it. And we reckon using iPads would have been the simplest for them. Okay, so um, we had topic sections. Uh, there were six weekly topics. Uh, each included PowerPoint slides with embedded short videos, um, activities, assessments, and resources. Uh, communication was either via forums or messaging, and the forum was found to be much better. Um, assessments had weekly quizzes. They uh, had to produce team reports and do a team presentation. They had an individual report, and they also had to do an entrepreneurial self-assessment. Now, it sounds quite difficult for um, students in the prison, but uh, Gina was really good for a lot of these assessments. She actually provided them with templates, like a business plan template, for example, uh, which they can download, paper copies of resources they could actually take back to their cells. Okay? Um, so, um, the supervised learning sessions, oh, there was quite a lot of group work as well, where um, students could self-select groups. We didn't want to put them in groups because we thought, well, some of them actually didn't get along with each other. So there are different factions. Um, there was also support outside the supervised learning uh, sessions. Um, so that's just a few of the screenshots. Of, as you can't see it that well, but just uh, giving you an idea of what they would see in the variety of resources and activities. Um, that was just uh, an example of a slide with Gina and typically a video to the side content on the left here. So challenges initially convincing corrections that this would be a good thing to do. Um, Paul had to actually travel to Wellington to demonstrate um, the setup to correction staff. Um, lack of internet, obviously. The limited digital literacy, we spoke about that. Um, we had a problem with words sometimes unlicensing itself for some reason. Uh, the Moodle app re routinely dropped content and it would only come right with a resyncing every week. Um, 
And there were access issues um, uh, in terms of our staff sometimes turning up at the, at the prison and being denied entry because something else had happened in the prison. Uh, what worked well, uh, this is according to Gina, the PowerPoint with the embedded slides really worked well. Um, the quizzes um, the students enjoyed, um, they enjoyed having hard copies of worksheets, but also the, uh, the templates that uh, Gina had developed for them. Not so well, um, they didn't seem to enjoy the messaging app, so um, a forum was used with each student in a unique group. Um, we need to look at ways of providing feedback much faster. Uh, the lack of familiarity with um, iPads was also a challenge, and then access issues from the university side. What's coming next is uh, we still need to have a debrief because this paper only ended a few weeks ago. Um, but I've just heard this morning the paper is, the corrections were very happy with the way things ran and they want us to rerun the paper at the same prison in September uh, this year. Um, we'll obviously look at modifications and improvements based on our experience. Um, and what will be more challenging is in the future looking at in, in our faculty particularly uh, are the quantitative papers, economics, finance, accounting, looking at ways of presenting that inside the prison. Scalability is also a problem. What if we do branch out to other prisons? Bigger number of students. Um, we can't have Paul running up and down um, sinking iPads, so we've got to look at those solutions. So. Um, and then also providing more learning support from both from the university and at the uh, prisons. Um, so there's quite a lot. I mean, it, it hasn't been perfect, but it was a pilot paper, and the fact that they've called us back to repeat it means that we've at least got some success. So just quickly, we've made the newspaper. Unfortunately, the headlines in newspapers were not very good. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so we weren't very happy with those, uh, but at least we got publicity. The stories were good, but the headlines were not. Um, this was something from the university's website, the entrepreneurial inmate. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Any questions? None. Okay. There's one over there. Ah, yes. Um, most of them had been in prison for a good number of years. Um, I, I told you that Anna Stretton, her sister, does a lot of work with them, uh, not only with those few, with, with many more, uh, and, and it was Anna who identified them as having potential. Some of them had already done previous tertiary study, some of them not. And so um, Anna, together with corrections, decided on who would qualify. Yeah, okay. Yes. Sorry, can I ask, do the students have access on, um, in, in the prisons to actual computers? Yes, um, but not for this paper. This was purely uh, using iPads, yeah. Any more? I can go now? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Please help me out. Yeah, thank, thank you. Dr.